and then came Antietam. Then came the Battle of Antietam, which qualifies under some definitions as a Union victory, the moment he'd been waiting for. And so five days later, he called his cabinet together and he told them. He said, when General Lee entered Maryland, I made a promise to myself and to my Maker that when Lee was driven out of Maryland, I would issue this proclamation. And now Lee has been driven out of Maryland. Although, as we've seen, he wasn't exactly driven out of Maryland. He went on his own good time. And I will now do it. And so, on the 22nd of September, 1862, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. And it has five broad points. Rather convoluted praise, legalistic, not inspiring any way, in any way, and again, it pulls its punches even as it strikes at slavery. First, again, the purpose of the war continues to be to save the Union, not changing. Second, when Congress meets, I will present it with a plan for federal assistance to help Slave, to help states then in the Union to do away with slavery. There's only one way to read this. Alabama, Mississippi, if you're back by January 1st, or whenever this goes into effect, you'll benefit from it too, holding out a carrot to return. Third, I'm going to ask Congress to help draw up plans for the voluntary, voluntary colonization of freed slaves. There's no hint here, no hint here of emancipation. And then number four, on January 1st, 1863, all slaves living in areas of this country in rebellion will become free, thenceforward and forever. That's the heart of it. January 1, 1863. All slaves living in areas then in rebellion will be free. The obvious warning here is, if you're no longer in rebellion, I'll continue to protect slavery as I've always pledged to do. It's your choice. And then fifth and finally, he says that every effort will be made to compensate those slaveholders living in those areas who lose their slaves but who are loyal to the Union. That's going to fade away and fall away before this is all over. 